I've got a surprise for our members today for coming next week. The, um, our Market Box members are getting fresh vegetables and wonderful food from Willow Haven Farm. I'm Tessa. I'm here in the East Field with Farmer Ruben and we're going to show you what's popping out of the ground today. Hey there. Hi, Where are we're, we? We're in our summer squash field. Uh, we had a pleasant surprise this week. Everything is uh, growing a little bit faster than anticipated. It looks like we'll be harvesting some summer squash this coming week. That's incredible because that's begin. That's the first of June. It's tomorrow. Yeah, it's, <laughs> everything kind of worked out this year. Um, this particular field we're standing in is facing south, so it heats up a little faster than some of the other fields. Uh, we also had a lot of just beautiful, sunny, warm days in May, and we had plenty of rainfall, unlike last year. All right, so show us how these are growing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here's a pretty good example of a, a yellow summer squash. You can see there's quite a few little ones in here. This is about six inches, three inches, inch and a half. And then there's, you know, three or four little ones already growing. So that's a really good sign. We have flowers. So this, uh, I expect this, us to be able to harvest uh, probably on Monday or Tuesday. That's great because we have boxes going out on Wednesday and Thursday to our farm members um, and they'll get the first locally grown zucchini in their boxes. Um, so one of the aspects of what we do here on the farm is we um, get our inventory ready and we're here. Uh, Ruben has to make a list of everything that he's going to be giving out in the boxes next week. And then you get to choose and customize everything. And so there's a little bit, uh, there's definitely an art and a strategy for Farmer Ruben to look at this field and say, okay, based on the number of plants and how they're growing, how many are we gonna get next week? So how do you do that, Ruben? Yeah, that's one of the hard and, hard and uh, difficult things uh, because if I tell people that there's more uh, vegetables available than there actually is then a lot of people will be disappointed so I try to you know be conservative about my estimate maybe underestimate a little bit but uh, right now I'll walk down this row I'll probably do a physical count and then I'll multiply by how many rows I have uh, these particular rows here are about 370 feet long so there's a there's a good amount of uh, plants in each row. There's probably about 200 of these uh, summer squash plants in this one particular row. Great. And did you also check for a green zucchini? No, as you can see, some of the summer squash and cucumbers are underneath these row covers. The reason we do that is it does give them a little bit more warmth and it also keeps the uh, cucumber beetles off of the plants just a little bit longer. So sometimes the plant, you know, for example, these are not covered and those are covered. Some of these plants look very good. And then there's some plants where there's a little bit more uh, leaf damage from cucumber beetles. So we, we try to keep most of the things covered that we're trying to get a, a nice early crop from. Great, so the, you, meaning you didn't check the how much how close the green zucchinis are to being ripe, being ready. Uh, it looks like I have a rose green zucchini right here. Yep. You can see these. Yep, they're harder to yep. pick out because they're not a there. different color. Yeah. But then I'll have to look Lift under the... these row covers at different places and see what, how it compares to the stuff out here. Yeah, okay. And were these all planted at the same time? They were, they were planted at the same time. Uh, we, because we had such a late frost and, and such a warm, uh, right at the end of April, we, we weren't getting any frost really pre predicted or forecasted. So I think I snuck this planting in right at the end of April. So we did not have a, a late frost. We did not have a May frost here on this particular location. Okay. Uh, on our yeah. farm at all. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That gives us definitely an advantage. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to let you run. I know you're heading off to the store, uh, the general store to do construction. And um, 
We'll be telling our farm members more about that in this, in the email that accompanies this video and, and showing people what else we're doing today to get ready for our market tomorrow, Saturday. And um, so right now you're just uncovering. Yeah, in order to see what's under here, I kind of need to take a peek. Uh, some people off do ask me about pollination uh, because you can see that they're flowering underneath here the, and there's no insects are allowed. So the pollination is really not possible to happen from the bees. So I do buy a special variety of seeds that are, um, I forget the word for it, parthenocarpic or something like that. But anyway, the, they do pollinate themselves without the use of bees. So that's why I can keep them underneath the row cover. Um, it certainly does still help to pull the row covers off. Pollination is better with bees. So they look great under the covers. Yep, I can see those green zucchinis. And it's really, really interesting to see the full flower still with the zucchini growing. You can see the size difference between this row and the other. And this was not covered. This row is covered. Oh, right. The size of the plants, the definitely. The plants are about double in size. Yeah. Yep. So that makes them more vigorous and more productive. They're more protected and they're protected from the colder nights. They get a few extra degrees of temperature every night. So. And they're protected from the bugs. These are a little bit more stressed. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, how long are you going to be out here? Five more minutes. I just have to walk up and down the row and do my estimate. Okay. And uh, I'll head over and to see where, um, see what else is going on at the market shed. Thank you. All right. So yeah, you can see that it's a um, really, it's a much more educational experience here out in the field when you get to talk to Farmer Ruben than when you just have me, Tessa. But it just. Um, goes to show that being connected to your farmer really helps you be connected to your food and you understand the dynamics of what it takes to grow and grow in appreciation of what it means to get food that's local. You know, you might have been able to get green and yellow zucchini from California and other places in the grocery store all winter long. And, you know, there's a lot of that goes into that shipping and um, you know dependence on the just the bigger food system and the the bigger farms corporate a lot of you know corporate owned companies are part of that chain uh, big big corporate farms and then the transportation chains and then I'm planning on reading a book that has a to do called Shopped. Um, that I just found out about from Cornucopia, an organic watchdog association that is talking more and more about independent grocery retailers and how supermarkets really put a lot of pressure on farmers to sell at um, pennies on the dollar for their things. So that's definitely a vision for everyone who's trying to support local and buy local um, it's really, really important to have a local food system because we've already seen what happens when we're dependent on all the big companies that control everything else. So right here, we're his, we have another example of producing something on the farm that gives you value. We're making strawberry and strawberry rhubarb jam here and we use a lower pectin so that we can do it without sugar, without as much sugar. Um, about half the sugar that you would get if you used a regular pectin and grew, were making your own jams with regular pectin. And I don't know about store-bought jam, 
there how much uh, sugar is in those if it's even more and here's our fresh strawberries these are organic organic strawberries grown by our friend Leroy who's been one of our partner farms for a long time six seven eight nine years um, our market is open and here's Ray um, getting getting things ready we we had a big order come in of all kinds of organic um, foods that people love to put into their shopping cart when they are customizing their orders they get to have vegetables and the meats and the dairy ordering those even the frozen pizzas that are high quality and you don't have to feel bad about eating them because we're using real ingredients and they're gonna on our pizza nights they're gonna come right out of our pizza oven and as you can see Reuben was just here taking bread out of the oven and then the last thing I wanted to show you is some of the things that you know are just growing around the the farm here our house is not too far away from here and this is our spearmint that's growing abundantly and it's just you know for us it's a useful ground cover for that area but it's it's valuable it's it's an it's a it's something that you can put in your food in your drinks and you get a lot of benefit from from the herbs and here's our greenhouse we have um, most of that is flowers um, some vegetables that we're still gonna plant this is our stinging nettle patch which has just taken over and I was just talking to a farm customer the other day who said she loves getting the stinging nettle. This is um, maybe the first year we've offered it, but people are using it in soups and in smoothies. It is a fantastic source of chlorophyll and chlorophyll is so important for healing, um, healing your gut. Um, I know that it was on the protocol for my son when we were dealing with Lyme disease. And here we have trays and trays of new, newly sprouting um, flower plants. And we still have some herbs. I'm hoping to get some of these herbs into my garden and maybe some of the flowers. So hopefully if you've continued to watch this video, you know that, um, that this is a unique opportunity for you to be connected to your farmer and to get food grown directly for you in the local Lehigh Valley and we're year round so we really believe that you should have access to high quality nutrient dense food all year round and we're making it our job to make sure that that happens through our market box program and through the new Willow Haven Farm General Store that is coming to the Brininsville Trexler Town area in Upper McCundry and so we'd love for you to get connected with us you can find us at willowhavenfarmpa.com and just download a what's in the box uh, guide or any of the other guides that are there. Um, I'm Tessa. I'm really enthusiastic about coaching you to use local food to get the most um, nutrition possible use for, in, for your budget and to start getting some of the most important foods into your diet that really will help heal your gut, help you fight inflammation and prevent disease in your later years. So thank you so much for being a part of us and we hope to have um, more contact with you in the future. Take care, bye-bye.